Hi out there. I wanted to do a quick video that shows one of the investments I've made in my software that um, separates me from a lot of other designers. So a lot of other designers don't invest in their software. They don't purchase extra scripts and plugins that make the book de design process better for the author and for themselves. I always say time is our most valuable asset and um, work smarter, not harder. Although we all work hard. <laughs> all right, so this is a tool that I use if there are excessive edits in a document or if I have an author who is technologically challenged. I mean, hey, it happens. There's plenty of young people. They can work a phone, but they don't know how to do anything more than that. So I try to accommodate my clients. This is also a great tool for when we've reached the end of the project and they need uh, the version of their manuscript that has had all the corrections made, which um, if, if I've already done the layout, then those were post layout corrections. And so it doesn't match their original Word document. Uh, so what I can do is export this out using a very expensive plugin, um, but it's, it's an upsell for my clients and uh, they, that they can elect. Um, or if there's excessive edits, I send it to them, at, you know, whatever process we're in because it saves me time and it saves them time. Uh, so if your document here, and here's the thing, like you're... The layout in design has to be done correctly. All the text frames have to be connected. You have to use, like here's some of my, here are the character styles used in this document. Now, character styles are applied to single words or to short strings of words usually. And then we have paragraph styles, which uh, I've got lots of things going on here, just nine yards of paragraph styles. So anyway, you need to make sure all of, you need to make sure your InDesign document is set up correctly, which that proves to be challenging for a lot of designers. Uh, when I get a hold of their files, I'm like, no, this is not right. So starting with the, um, when you have a document that has layout done correctly. You have zero overrides. An override is uh, basically a conflict between a character style or a paragraph style. You have a setting that is conflicting with that setting. So I have zero overrides. As you can see down here, it says no errors. And what, um, all of my text frames are connected. So I'm going to click inside. I know my, my machine's like catching up. Okay. So all the different, like I've got my um, hidden characters turned on. I've got my margins turned on and then my text frames turned on. So I turned all that off. So I like I always forget it looks normal to me. Some of y'all may be like, what is that? So I'm inside the text frame. My text frames are, let me, let me make sure. Let me, let me, sometimes I have to disconnect something for whatever reason. Okay, yeah, everything's connected. Okay, and I have like this, uh, this is her title page that I have to, I have to finish and uh, flesh out and make some adjustments or whatever. So that doesn't need to be involved in there. It'll just confuse her uh, when I do the export. So we're just going to leave it like this. And then <clears throat> I'm going to go to file. Words flow is the name of the plugin. When I purchased it a few years back, it was $300, and then I had to do an upgrade when InDesign upgraded, and um, so anyway, just maintenance, and I'm going to export with words flow, and then I'm going to choose edit to show you, okay. I'm just going to pop it in here for now. So this document has not been typeset. Typeset comes at the very end 
I mean, I, I have some grep styles and different things set up within my paragraph styles that do some foundational typesetting, but the actual, the nitty gritty of the typesetting hasn't been done yet. So if you're like, oh, that's not typeset right. Well, I haven't done that yet. So hold your horses. All right, so this is generating the document from InDesign to a Word document. I'm not gonna look at myself, so I look crazy. Okay, so what happens here is when this is done, this is just used for text revisions only. It's never gonna look exactly like how I have it in InDesign. One thing is it does not retain the trim size, but we're not worrying about that. We, we just use this option for text revisions or for a copy of the final text in a format that the author can access because there, there's, InDesign's very complicated. They don't need to be getting in there. So this is a way to allow them access to the content without them messing up the design files, basically. They, I do, uh, include my design files at the end to the author but uh, they no author should ever go in there and try to figure out what I did unless they have 10 years of book designing experience okay so you can see like it didn't include the image um, and then it it just has you know it it has the text it looks like blah. like see it lost the drop cap that's totally fine no big deal so what happens is the author can come in here and uh, under strict rules to do not mess with the formatting, like if you see a, a page break in a weird place or whatever, don't jack with that. You are only to go in and adjust the text. So they can add bold or bold, you know, bold italic, italics, but that really needs to be the limit of what they're doing here. Okay, so yeah. This is what it looks like. And then they will come in here and they will make their changes. And then, um, well, I will email it to them. You know, they will um, save it to their hard drive. They will make a copy. I mean, in a perfect world, everybody would know how to use a shared Dropbox folder. But again, I'm sending this to them because they're not technologically advanced. So after that, they've done their thing. And so what happens, what had happened was, if anybody knows why that's funny. Um, so what happens is when it, when it exports the Word document, it creates a link to that Word document. And then, uh, so the author will save their file, you know, they'll rename it like edits or whatever. They send it back to me and then I relink to the file they sent back it syncs up all their changes and then um okay let me do this let me do this let me pull this back up so i'm going to go here and make some changes let me close this just in case yeah let me just close that I do work in 2021, but man, I've been so busy. I just have not installed. Like when you, when you install the new plugin, you have to call and have it activated for the new. And like, I just have not had the time. So I, I saved it as an IDML, opened it up in 2020 so I could access the plugin. So that, that's where we're at in life. <laughs> okay, so say I'm just going to do whatever. Say she wanted this first line bold. Just to give you an example. Oh, I, I'm not all that. She wanted this first line bold. Okay, and then she saves it. And then she sends it back to me. We do all that. Then we go back into this file. Okay, and it says, oh, there's an issue with the link. It can see that the link I was working from has been modified. Now, because it's already named the same and it's in the same, same location, I would just hit update modified links. But I'm going to hit don't update links. And then I'm going to go in, see like nothing was done. Um, and 
but then I go into my links panel and I can see there's this hazard sign so it's like oh that link has been modified so I can right click on it I can relink to go find a new file um, which will be the one she sends back to me or I can hit update link and um, it will update that exact same file at that location which which I'm gonna do because I didn't send it to her you know this is just like in theory all right so it's updating so we should see it as long yeah I have it closed it's gonna take a minute to kind of like re-import okay so you see it doing this processing character attributes Do, 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 do. Got my video processor going, so it's taking just a minute. I'm going to pause this, I think. Oh, wait. oh, okay, here it goes, here it goes. Ugh, now it's like, that is not a 95% bar. It wants to finish. Okay, it's finished now and you can see how it comes in. It has that bold. Then if you watch down here in the bottom right, um, where your print, um, I forget what it's called. Okay, so there's okay, so there's two different things. A pre-flight panel, I knew it started with a P. All right, so in your pre-flight panel, uh, you can set up different uh, profile so if we go to our digital publishing profile that I have set up it's going to show me um, that there is a eventually eventually it's going to show me this see how it says checking so this is like one reason InDesign is so amazing too like way above and beyond word and don't even get me started on Canva or any of the other stuff people try to use. If you're not using InDesign to do editorial, major text layout, like, just don't. <laughs> okay, so you see these style overrides, which some of these, I mean, they were there, but they were on my master pages. It was not bothering me, you know, what was going on, or they were out in my pasteboard. You see where it says PB, that's pasteboard. B is my master page. This is fine. Okay, so we see right here it says stop it, she hissed. So I would click on that. It would take me to that. And then I'm like, oh no, that's not italic. I need to change that to a bold character style. So, or a bold italic. Do I have one of those set up? Okay, so no, I would like create a bold italic style if that's what she wanted. Okay, bam, that takes care of that override. Okay, and then I would save it and get on my life. All right, so hope that was just a little helpful about what we got going on um, out here in pro book design land. It, it's an amazing tool. They also have one available for Google Docs. Uh, you can you can do all kinds of things, but this I'm gonna I've already been talking 13 minutes, so this is I'm staying on task. I'm doing it. So um, anyway, that's one of the things uh, when a a professional book designer invests in their software, they take into account um, all of our valuable time and how we can best maximize that. Uh, so. Let me know if you have any questions about that, and I'm, I'm not going to save this because um, she does not want that bold and metallic. <laughs> um, okay, that's it. Thank you. Goodbye.